everybody this is Alma coming to you from Long Beach California today is Thursday January 21st of the year 2021 and this is going to be floss tip number 48 so almost 50 videos done unbelievable <laughs> um, but welcome to you all welcome back to all my returning viewers and subscribers thank you as always for your continuing support we're coming back week after week to check in on me um yeah it's just very much appreciated and if this is your first time stopping by um welcome <laughs> thank you for giving me a chance i hope that you like what you see you find a reason to stay to subscribe and to continue fo to follow me on my stitching journey um so i am filming a little bit earlier this week because um, time got away from me and I didn't realize that this weekend was the first um, 24 hours of cross stitch marathon hosted by Jen Lee of Quirks and Stitches um, So I wanted to go ahead and film today so I could have you know maximum stitching time <laughs> tomorrow and you know for the rest of the weekend um, But I'll I'll talk a little bit more about a little bit more about that later um, First I do want to show you what I have worked on this week and then talk about plans at the end of the video um, so yeah, so go ahead and um, settle in, grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, and um, your stitching if you want to go ahead and stitch along or craft along, if you want to knit, do whatever you want to do. Um, and yeah, let's get to the stitching. Um, and this is going to be no particular order again. I'll, I will go ahead and mention if I used things for challenges and stuff, but the first piece that I did want to show you, so a piece that I've been working on pretty regularly this month. That's twofold. Um, the first reason is because this was one of the two whips that were called for Whipgo um, from Jessie Marie, from Jessie Marie Does Stuff. And the second reason is because um, Enchanted Stitching, um, which is a cross stitch challenge group, uh, they featured Hunchback of Notre Dame this month. So of course I had to pull out my Esmeralda chart from Tilt and Crafts based on Daniel Kordak's artwork. Um, this particular chart is no longer available, but I very much like <laughs> Daniel Kordak's artwork. So if, if you are interested, um, I would recommend that you can go ahead and check it out because it's got some pretty, pretty amazing pieces from other, from other movies. Um, but this is what I have so far. There we go. So I did 3,000 stitches on her this month. Um, the last time you saw this, I finished up some of the browns here, this color streak that's brown, and then got to some of the brick red terracotta colors that are over here, um, and some of the golds as well. Um, I pretty much, the way I'm working this, I just want to keep going to the side, right? So I'm not necessarily going page by page and just base it off what what fits on the q snap <laughs> um and then just i want to work my way to to the other side of the piece and then i can um start on the next row of pages i mean next row right but the next section you know um but i am gonna go ahead and just call it for now um the goal for her for this year is to do um 30, stitches of which i only have only but I have 15,000 stitches done on her, so yeah, so you're still, you're still going to see her um, come out throughout the year. I just think that 3,000 stitches for a single month is plenty of progress, so, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and have some other, other whips have their turn now, um, but I, I really do like working on this piece. I love the colors. Um, the next piece that I have here is um, one that I mentioned. Yeah, um, I mentioned that I was going to keep working on the last video. This is my Haku piece. The designer is Ekaterina Saitova. And I was using this for one of the spaces in full coverage Fanatics Bingo. Esmeralda was also for a space. We were supposed to work on something or a piece that had evergreen trees and I could have pulled out my moon charmer but since I was already doing this for 
enchanted stitching challenge I just decided to double dip and do the penalty stitches the enchanted stitching challenge called for 1600 stitches so that's more than half not more than half but um you know uh, penalty stitch space is 2000 so I figured it was it would it would just be easier to do it that way but this one was for a space that had to do we needed to work on something that had dragons in it so I did keep going on it as I mentioned um, last time I mentioned that I was at the halfway point of those 1000 stitches um, previously I had only done the the body I guess of the tail um, so since then, I added everything that you see that's blue-green, right? All the aqua colors over here. And um, I did, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but I did also add some of the half stitches that are for the sky. Um, so that I could go ahead and just um, finish up those pages. Because this doesn't, um, it's partially compatible with Pattern Keeper. You can upload it and you can mark off symbols, but it, you can't search for them. So I decided to not use it. I figured that was kind of a, not a waste of time, but I can do it with a hard copy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was going to use this for another space, but I don't have enough stitches for it. Um, especially because I'm done with the full cross stitches. I only have half stitches to go. And, um, you know, if, if I want to do a space that's a thousand regular stitches, I would have to do 2,000 regular, or 2,000 half stitches, and I don't have 2,000 stitches left. So, I don't know what, um, I might just work on this next month. Um, also because I don't, <laughs> I'm kind of spoiled now, and I don't like counting stitches, like, manually. Um, Pattern Keeper does it for me. So I'll just do something else for for the space. We have to we have to work on the the piece that has the least amount of stitches. And for my for me that's my smaller that's my smallest full coverage piece. So I'll just work on um, Bilbo. Bilbo is my next smallest. So that'll that'll take care of it. Um, the next piece that I worked on is my Hogwarts Castle piece, and this is no longer available. Sorry, I feel like I keep saying that. I feel like a, a broken record. <laughs> but this is um, by The Stitching Girl. Um, I got it maybe like 2015, 2016. So it's been a while. Um, but there's plenty of Etsy sellers that have the same image charted. It's just her specific version that's not available anymore. Um, and I mentioned it last, last time. Um, I hadn't really stitched on it all month. And I just felt, I just felt like it was it was overdue um but this is what i have so far i used this for a um, monthly challenge on enchanted stitching we needed to work on something that was made out of stone because of the stone gargoyles um, we needed to put 800 stitches on it so i did that and now i'm working on a second monthly prompt where we have to stitch on something um a piece that saved us in one way or another and we have to put 500 stitches on that one so I think I'm like 200 because I'm at 200 because I remember I hit the thousand mark for space in full coverage fanatics bingo which I'm using I'm actually using a, a penalty penalty stitches for that one um, let me see yeah so technically we're, we're supposed to start on a new start Put a thousand stitches on a new start but i decided to do penalty stitches on my oldest whip so I'm, i have a thousand stitches done and i have a thousand stitches to go and i'm also using this for the magical stitches um task for this week which is we were supposed to put um you had several options i went for the penalty stitch options because i would rather stitch more so i'm doing 1500 p um 1500 stitches on it which again, I'm already doing 2,000 stitches for, for full coverage, so it'll do. <laughs> um, the next piece that I have to show you, 
it's actually going to be on my tablet because I don't have the cover photo um, printed. But I did mention um, I did mention last week that I was going to work on these. The first one I have to show you is um, they're both going to be by Amy Stewart from Heaven and Earth Designs. First one is her Stitch in Time. I'm trying to there we go. I'm trying to work against the glare here, but um, oh yeah, it's just hard. Um, but yeah, I stitched on this for um, Enchanted Stitching. We needed to work on something that had lots of color because Clopine has, is, not only is he a, a colorful character because of his personality, but his dress is just it's golds and pinks and purples so we needed to work on something that had um, different color schemes so this is perfect because it has one color scheme per season um and when i mentioned it so when i mentioned in one of my videos that i was going to be working on this um vicky my friend vicky from reading and stitching hi vicky <laughs> um she's also the headmistress for magical stitches um she let me know that, um, or she told me to let her know when, when I was going to be working on this so she could pull it out as well. So this is what I've done so far. The prompt is for 600 stitches. I've done 400 stitches so far. So I meant, I originally wanted to go ahead and finish the 1000 stitches for um, full coverage bingo space. I'm using this for a piece that has a bird in it, um, and there's um, I just pull I just put away the <laughs> cover picture, but there's like a hummingbird on the top left corner, among other things. So I'm like, okay, that counts. But yeah, it's mostly been white and pale blues, and um, I'm currently working on the. I also worked on the. 819 which is a really really pale pink oh yeah so i mean on one part it, it goes by quickly because i'm only i'm only working on like two or three colors but it's white against white so i have to have very very good light <laughs> when i work on work on it i think that's why i haven't worked on it too much because it's been really cloudy lately not now but it has been and then in addition to Amy Stewart's um, Stitch in Time, I did also pull out her Reader's Paradise and I'm working on the supersized max color version because I'm crazy. Um, and I am, I mean, most of my full coverage pieces I'm using for bingo, right? So I'm using this for the spot where we have to stitch on a cozy spot, whatever our definition of cozy spot is. And for me, this, I mean, it's Reader's Paradise, right? So wouldn't it be nice to just kind of take a book and curl up somewhere in there? There's, yeah, there's even like a little um, reading nook right here. But I'm also using this for a prompt and enchanted stitching. We have to stitch on, on some, a piece that has an animal that we could use as a performing partner because Esmeralda has Jolly to, um, to dance along with her in her performances. So there's a little kitty right here. He's curled up in the sleep. So yeah, so I'm just like, I mean, I don't, I really don't have that many pieces with animals. So I had to like be, get creative with it. And I just said, you know, I could just train the cat to like meow on cue or something. <laughs> um, but this is what I've done so far. I've only done like 300 stitches. Um, since the last time you saw this, I pretty much started working on all the brown tones, so, and that's not, I mean, I hadn't done that on purpose or anything, it just happens that every time I pick it up, I work on a different color scheme. So last time I worked on the pink and the golds over here, um, and now I'm just working on all the brown tones that you see, but I am also using, I'm also going to be stitching the purple, it's on 154. And the 939 and the 310 that goes along with it. I figured those would be nice, easy, quick stitches. 
um, cause there's a lot of it. <laughs> so that'll be a, a quick way to get those 1000 stitches done. And this is a massive piece. Like, look at me trying to roll up everything. <laughs> But yeah, super size max color. I can I don't regret choosing the max color, but as I mentioned, I don't know if I'm. I think I mentioned in my, my other videos, but the way I like to work with bingo is I try to be strategic and choose like blocks of color, so I can stitch those um, one thousand uh, stitch blocks quickly. But with max color, you don't get blocks of color. <laughs> By definition, um, you get several similar tones next to each other, so, but it's okay. Um, it's gonna turn out beautiful, so I don't mind it. And then um, the last piece that I can show you on my tablet is um, a piece that I've been, again, it's a, one of my focus pieces. I want to finish this by the end of February. This is um, the Full Moon Pattern by Foxy Stitcher on Etsy. And I mentioned last week that there was an issue with her Etsy shop. It's been fixed now. Apparently it was only down for a couple of days and we just had the misfortune <laughs> of trying to, um, trying to visit her page during those two days, but it's up now and this is still, still available. And I want to finish this by the end of February. So this is what I have so far. I've reached the officially reached the 75% mark. I think I'm at 76 or 77% now, but I'm still um, finishing it color by color. I figured that was the best way to go. And it's just nice to see, like for example, this area right here just has a lot of different tones to it. So it's nice to see those empty spaces get filled in. So yeah. Um, this was used for, we needed to stitch on a piece, yeah, it was a piece or, so a design or designer that started with the letters F or C for full coverage. So this is Full Moon by Foxy Stitcher, so that's what, what the 1000 stitches came from. So. The next piece, the next space I'll be using her for is the um, closest to a finish. Um, technically, if you're looking at stitch count, technically, you know, build will haku is the closest to a finish, but as I mentioned, I don't want to have to deal with that with counting stitches and even cutting it in half, right? Um, and Bilbo is next. But Bilbo has a lot of backstitching. And with this one, there's no backstitching. So even though Bilbo's, I think, at like 80 or 82%, this one's only at 76, 77. Um, this is technically closest to a finish because there's no backstitching involved. Once I finish stitching, that's it. It's it, it it'll be finished. <laughs> so so yeah. Um, so again, you'll see uh, you'll see her again <laughs> next week. Um, so I can keep on track to finish by the end of February. And um, the last full coverage piece that I worked on this week is my another Heaven and Earth Designs chart. This is the Eternal Promise based on the artwork by Matt Stewart. And um, for this one, I did manage to finish another space. Um, as I mentioned last last time, I think I was like 300 stitches away from finishing it. So I was able to go ahead and finish it. And it's been, it was mostly just like fill in the stems. But I did also just work on, I try to work on, again, um, solid blocks of color. So this color has been done a lot. <laughs> and as it is, um, once I finish doing, I'm doing the dark gray right now. So once I finish going this way, I'm going to start going back up here so I can work on this color again, the, the soft purple. And this is actually going to be my focus next month. I mean, it's going to be my focus all the time, but next month for full coverage fanatics, um, they're doing a romance theme for their, their reading, their book challenge. 
so this month it was classics i think so they picked pride and prejudice the great gatsby and little women and you're supposed to stitch the page count times one times ten yeah times ten so um i did um I did Little Woman, which was um, like 45, 4,500 stitches done on Wonder Woman. I did Great Gatsby on Full Moon, that was um, uh, like 2,000 stitches. And now I have to do Pride and Prejudice, which will be another almost 2,000 stitches. Um, but next month, the big one is Outlander, which is like... 850 some stitches or pages which means it'll be 8500 stitches so which I counted it would be the equivalent of doing 300 daily stitches so we'll have to see <laughs> um, I, I want to do it that'll be a nice nice achievement um, so yeah so you'll see it you'll see it come back out Um, okay, so that was my full coverage. The last couple of pieces that I have to show you um, is, so this one is my my friends and family style and I don't have the cover page on me. And I checked, I don't have it on my tablet either. So, sorry. But um, you've seen this, a lot of people were stitching it this year, or last year. Um, this is where I'm at and this is so it's called friends and family but it's the linen and threads mystery sampler from 2020 um, and since the last time you saw this I finished so I finished this large flower right here and I finished this motif so what I want to do is I want to add a pop of color on every section and I decided that for for this section um, I was gonna go ahead and do are they carnations? I don't know what kind of flowers they are, but this is the there's two flowers right here. So um so yeah, so I'm using this. It's actually a light purple, but when you put it up against the fabric, when you put it up against the other colors, it looks more pink <laughs> than it does purple, which is perfect. Um, but the reason why I chose this color is because it's um let's see if I can put it up against it. It's pretty much the exact tone of this pink that shows up um, sporadically throughout throughout the fabric. And this fabric is by Hand Dyed by Rolanda. Um, at least when I got it, she used to do like one-off pieces, which is why I got it because I knew that it was never gonna come back. She still sells. She still um, sells hand dyed um, fabric, but. I don't know if now she has like set colors or not. But you'll see this again next week because this is, um, this was the second whip that was called for whip go. And as I mentioned um, previously, for me, the goal for each whip that's called is to use them for at least a week, at least once a, a week for a weekly prompt or um, monthly. So for Esmeralda, I did the monthly prompts. In this one, I'm doing the weekly prompts. So I'll work on this again next week, um, the last week of January, and then we'll see. And I do want to keep going on um, my time to stitch style. So since I finished one piece or one section, I finished the January section on this, I can now move on to an, the next style <laughs> and finish a section from there. And I'll keep doing that back and forth until I finish both. The last piece um, that I want to show you is my um, Flowers of the Alphabet. Um, this is by Lemonade on Etsy. And I did check, um, I did check, it's still available. So I'll link it below. Um, but I'm doing this differently. I'm using my own, my own colors. I'm using it as a D stash piece. So I'm just basing it off of the flowers themselves. I mean, the call, the piece itself calls for a ton of different colors anyway. So I figured it was a good opportunity to use up those leftover threads. 
and I'm using this for several different challenges. I'm using this for a challenge in semi-sane stitchers called Alpha My Bed, <laughs> where we have to, um, throughout the year, we'll be working on the letters of the alphabet. So the first two weeks of January were A, and now this, the last next two weeks is B, so on and so forth. So this is what I have on the bluebells, B for bluebells. And um, I'm also using this for a challenge in No New Starts, No New Starts 2021, where they're doing a um, astrological sign tile throughout the year. So we're, st we're doing it, you know, based on when each time frame is for each sign. So now we're in Aquarius and apparently one of the flowers that represents Aquarius is violet. So the alphabet does have V for violets. <laughs> so yeah, so I'll keep working on this next week as well, because again, we're supposed to work on it for the two weeks for semi-saying. And I'll just keep working on it um, for the Aquarius thing as well, because again, this is gonna keep going all year. So hopefully I'll get it, I'll get it finished. Um, but yeah, um, that's all I worked on this, this week. Um, this week, well, for the weekend, I think I'm gonna go ahead and focus on Hogwarts Castle so I can finish the Magical Stitches Challenge. Um, uh, semi Saint is holding a finishing frenzy, I think they're calling it, um, this weekend. So I was kind of tempted to pull out Haku so I could finish it, but I don't think I will just because I'm trying to do the spaces for full coverage phonetics bingo as well so I think I'll just stick to working on um, getting those 1,000 stitches done on Hogwarts and then we'll see you know if, if I finish that I'll work on something else um, maybe finish up the, the spaces on a stitch in time in Reader's Paradise so we'll see um, I used to do it the way that um the way that I used to do it was to focus on one piece each day. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do that though, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I will go ahead and keep working on Flowers of the Alphabet. I will work on uh, Friends and Family Sal for a weekly prompt on Hunchback. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to. Oh, um, I didn't get a chance to work on my Disney Villains piece this week, so I'll work on her next week so I can finish up that, um, that bingo, bingo space. So, yeah, I have to wrap things up. Because, <laughs> again, I have, I usually, I used, I used to be able to work on one space at a time, but now I'm just all over the place. So I have to make sure that I finish all the spaces that I started. Yeah, um, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, it was Yesterday was a very joyous day here in the United States. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. Um, but yeah, um, I hope that you guys have a good week. A good weekend. Productive week. And as always, um, that you always find a time to do the thing that makes you happy. Until next time, guys. Take care. Bye.